August 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 32 and 33 from the Old Testament. So these three men refused to answer Job further because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then Elihu, son of Barakal, the Beuzite, of the family of Ram became very angry. He was angry with Job for justifying himself rather than God. With Job's three friends, he was also angry because they could not find an answer and so declared Job guilty. Now Elihu had waited before speaking to Job because the others were older than he was. But when Elihu saw that the three men had no further reply, he became very angry. So Elihu, son of Barakal the Buzite, spoke up. I am young, but you are elderly. That is why I was fearful and afraid to explain to you what I know. I said to myself, age should speak, and length of years should make wisdom known. But it is a spirit in people, the breath of the Almighty, that makes them understand. It is not the aged who are wise, nor old men who understand what is right. Therefore I say, listen to me. I, even I, will explain what I know. Look, I waited for you to speak. I listened closely to your wise thoughts while you were searching for words. Now I was paying you close attention, yet there was no one proving Job wrong. Not one of you was answering his statements. So do not say we have found wisdom. God will refute him, not man. Job had not directed his words to me, and so I will not reply to him with your arguments. They are dismayed and cannot answer any more. They have nothing left to say. And I have waited, but because they do not speak, because they stand there and answer no more. I too will answer my part. I too will explain what I know. For I am full of words, and the spirit within me constrains me. Inside I am like wine which has no outlet, like new wineskins ready to burst. I will speak so that I may find relief. I will open my lips so that I may answer. I will not show partiality to anyone, nor will I confer a title on any man. For I do not know how to give honorary titles, If I did, my Creator would quickly do away with me. But now, O Job, listen to my words and hear everything I have to say. See, now I have opened my mouth. My tongue in my mouth has spoken. My words come from the uprightness of my heart, and my lips will utter knowledge sincerely. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Reply to me, if you can. Set your arguments in order before me, and take your stand. Look, I am just like you in relation to God. I too have been molded from clay. Therefore, no fear of me should terrify you, nor should my pressure be heavy on you. Indeed, you have said in my hearing, I heard the sound of the words. I am pure without transgression. I am clean and have no iniquity. Yet God finds occasion with me. He regards me as his enemy. He puts my feet in shackles. He watches closely all my paths. Now in this you are not right. I answer you, for God is greater than a human being. Why do you contend against him that he does not answer all a person's words? For God speaks the first time in one way, the second time in another, though a person does not perceive it. In a dream, a night vision, when deep sleep falls on people as they sleep in their beds, Then he gives a revelation to people and terrifies them with warnings to turn a person from his sin and to cover a person's pride. He spares a person's life from corruption, his very life from crossing over the river. Or a person is chastened by pain on his bed and with the continual strife of his bones so that his life loathes food and his soul rejects appetizing fare. His flesh wastes away from sight and his bones, which were not seen, are easily visible. He draws near to the place of corruption and his life to the messengers of death. If there is an angel beside him, one mediator out of a thousand, to tell a person what constitutes his uprightness. And if God is gracious to him and says, Spare him from going down to the place of corruption, I have found a ransom for him. Then his flesh is restored like a youth. He returns to the days of his youthful vigor. He entreats God and God delights in him. He sees God's face with rejoicing, and God restores to him his righteousness. That person sings to others, saying, I have sinned and falsified what is right, but I was not punished according to what I deserved. 
He redeemed my life from going down to the place of corruption, and my life sees the light. Indeed, God does all these things twice, three times in his dealings with a person to turn back his life from the place of corruption, that he might be enlightened with the light of life. Pay attention, Job. Listen to me. Be silent, and I will speak. If you have any words, reply to me. Speak, for I want to justify you. If not, you listen to me. Be silent, and I will teach you wisdom. God, Job is such a patient man. (laughs) I don't think I could have listened to three so-called friends go on and on like that. And now he's about to listen to Elihu, uh, a young man, go on for quite a bit, telling him he's wrong and, and how he needs to be repentant. Very similar to what the other three friends said. But something, something Elihu said bothered me because it's something that I do and I know I do it and I know it's wrong and I know when I Elihu said it was wrong but I guess I had never put it into those words where he's talking about God that if there is an angel beside him one mediator out of a thousand to tell a person what constitutes his uprightness and if God is gracious to him and says spare him from going down to the place of corruption I have found a ransom for him and that ransom that Elihu is talking about to Job is all his possessions, his children, um, his health at this point, that in exchange for forgiveness of this unrepentant sin, God took the ransom, or you took the ransom, for, uh, for all of that sinfulness. Now, we had previously heard that Job had um, done all the sacrifice he he was supposed to uh, to make sure that his life was in alignment with what you wanted him to do. But what Elihu is saying is that there is something that he didn't make a sacrifice for. And so you made it for him. You made a ransom for him. You traded forgiveness that you gave to Job in exchange for his children and his household and his health. And that couldn't be further from the truth, even in the Old Testament times. Um, We, from New Testament people, uh, New Testament Christians, are (laughs) blessed beyond anything that we can imagine because we receive that forgiveness of sins um, through repentance and your son Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. But I still do that. And that's why it bothers me so much reading that. I still do that. I still think that if things are taken from my life. That it's very much like when I was a child. And things were taken away from me when I did something bad. My favorite toy was taken away. If I did something wrong. And it was given back to me. um, After I repented. And after a certain amount of time that my parents deemed was okay. And I still have a ghost filter of that same process. And here I'm watching Elihu talk about it. The same thing that I do. When when Eddie was killed. I Even to this day, I truly believe that I can connect all the dots as to his death completely pointing back to me. That I did this, which did this, which did this, and I can go through about two dozen things and finally gets to the point where he was where he was at that day and he was killed. And all these things were my fault because I I was such a huge part of his life for for over half of his life. And because of my ch- decisions, a lot of them bad choices um, that weren't of your will, a lot of those choices led him to be where he was coming down that particular street that particular day and being killed. And so for all of my previous choices, before y- before I became... Uh, a new or before I had a new heart in you 
all those bad choices that I had with with Eddie I truly believe that my forgiveness came from his life that that was a consequence and I still struggle with that to this day and you know I do because we talk about this a lot and of course I have friends who reassure me oh no you know that's God's plan and you know he's ready to take Eddie and all this stuff it's not your fault you weren't even around that entire year last year and but I still feel that way so I can completely understand how Elihu is coming to that conclusion and how many people have come to that conclusion when you take things out of our life what have we done somebody else or something else is paying for our choices but we only have to read a small portion of the Bible to realize that that's not true in the slightest it's definitely the the thought process in my head is definitely coming from Satan trying to distract me from what the truth is what the good news is that's not the truth and all at all the truth is that you're in control you're sovereign over everything that happens and even though I did make bad choices and even though I've repented for those bad choices it was still your choice of whether Eddie was killed that day or not and that's a whole other issue to deal with but it was your choice that it was his time to be done with this world and I do thank you as I have done thousands of times that he was killed instantly and didn't have to suffer but our good news comes from the fact that your son died on the cross for us he died for all of those bad choices for all those sinful choices that I have made am making will make and he did that for every single person and it's so funny because this whole thing about Job talks a lot about justice, right? Is God right to take things away from good people? But yet, I think about the injustice that Jesus, who didn't do anything wrong ever in his entire life, died a horrid death. And took on all the sins of the world, which I can't even begin to imagine that. And he did it for somebody like me. Somebody like me who spent half of her life messing up. Choosing the wrong thing. Choosing my world instead of your world, God. Your son did something like that for me. Even though today I still mess up. I still say the wrong thing. I still think the wrong thing. I still act out in the wrong way. So this whole book of Job. And whether what you did or what Job did is righteous or unrighteous or just or unjust. I believe all of this just continues to point back to the cross. Who are we to say what is right, what is wrong, what is just, what is unjust. Except when we are on our knees saying it is not justified. It is not justified the death of your son. Because I am such a mess. And my only, my only shimmer of hope in that is my life sometimes reflects yours God <laughs> there are times only because of you that I get things right that I choose your will instead of my sinful nature that I choose your grace and your mercy to show to somebody else instead of my own insecurities and jealousies it's only because of the strength that you give me that I continue to head down the path that you have for me instead of choosing the so-called easy way out. Filling myself up with the wonders of this world, which are so fleeting. 
Only when I am on my knees is the only time that I ever get to call into question injustice and it's because of me, not because of you. You have chosen to take a lot of things and a lot of people out of my life. Some of them are direct consequences. With how much I love the world, of course you had to take a lot of material things out of my life to get me to understand I needed to be fully dependent upon you, but I even at the time knew that was a blessing. And you call us to rejoice at all times. Even when we lose our best friend of some 30 years, <laughs> even on the days where everything's going right, you call us to rejoice because we should be content, incredibly content in the fact of we serve a God who loves us beyond anything we can imagine. Your graciousness, your mercy, and the fact that you forgive our sins is not just because of who we are. But I do thank you and rejoice that you are my God. And each day I will try harder with your strength to make my life a reflection of yours, God. I know it is only with you that I will be able to do that. Thank you for such strong teaching words today, God. You take such amazing care of us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.